In our recent video on Swiss neutrality in the Second World War, we concluded that Switzerland played its hand pretty smoothly, managing not to piss off either side too much and ultimately surviving. Spain, on the other hand, wasn't quite so smooth. It had just come out of a devastating civil war and definitely wasn't psyched about a world war. To set the scene, a little on the Spanish Civil War, a 32-month conflict beginning in July 1936 and fought between the Republicans and the Nationalists for control of Spain. Of course, it was a little more nuanced than that, with multiple factions grouped under the left-leaning Republicans and multiple under the right-leaning Nationalists. Notably, the Republicans enjoyed support from the USSR and France, while Germany and Italy bolstered the Nationalists. Hitler was, of course, head honcho in Germany at this time, and basically used the Civil War as live fire training for the recently formed Wehrmacht. He also helped Spain accrue a massive wartime debt of some 215 million US dollars to be paid out to the Fuhrer as soon as possible. After two years and eight months, and around a half a million deaths, of which many were the result of massacres and mass executions, the nationalist leader, General Francisco Franco, took charge of the country and established Francoist Spain on the 1st of April 1939 with himself as its almighty dictator. With that, it's safe to say that Franco was stoked to be number one and more than a little grateful for Hitler and Mussolini's money, weapons and men. When World War II broke out in September later that year, however, and after Britain declared war on Germany, the Spanish people and government were torn. Some were into the Brits, while others were into the Germans. With the British Overseas Territory of Gibraltar standing on the southern tip of the Iberian Peninsula, just south of Spain, things were a little tricky for Franco. On the one hand, the Allies might invade Spain through Gibraltar. On the other, the Axis might march on Gibraltar through Spain. So, what Franco essentially decided to do was take a stance of strict neutrality until he could strike a sweet deal with Hitler, whom he still owed a fair bit of cash. In June 1940, Franco said he'd sign on with Hitler if Hitler could give him the French colony of Cameroon. But Cameroon had been Germany's before World War I, so Hitler wasn't keen. In August that same year, Hitler was more interested in what Franco and Spain could do for him, but also demanded too much of Franco. Hitler wanted to set up military bases in Spanish Morocco and the Canary Islands, and Franco was probably wise to decline. In October, Hitler and Franco met in Hende, France, near the Spanish border and tried to iron out a partnership, but it didn't go well, with Franco demanding too much of the Führer and the Führer becoming absolutely furious with Franco, about whom he later said, I prefer to have three or four of my own teeth pulled out than to speak to that man again. This put a spanner in the works for Hitler, who had hoped to win Franco to his side so he could carry out the proposed Operation Felix a joint Spanish-German attack on Gibraltar. If this had come to pass, it might have drastically changed the war. In the words of German Field Marshal and war criminal Wilhelm Keitel, instead of attacking Russia, we should have strangled the British Empire by closing the Mediterranean. The first step in the operation would have been the conquest of Gibraltar. That was another great opportunity we missed. Beginning in this same year, Franco stationed much of the Spanish army in southern Spain in anticipation of an Allied attack through Gibraltar, which didn't come to pass. As the war dragged on, Franco moved these men to the Pyrenees Mountains at the French border, fearing Hitler would say, screw it, and march through Spain without Franco's permission. Despite Franco's concerns, however, he still dealt with the Germans without explicitly signing up for the Axis. The German war machine was ravenous for raw materials, especially Wolfram ore, known also as tungsten. By mid-1941, the only country Hitler could buy it from was Spain, so, naturally, Franco started handing it to Hitler to pay off his debt. This, however, didn't fly so well with Britain and the United States, which tacked an oil embargo to Franco's forehead. If Franco didn't want his oil shipments limited and their prices to go through the roof, he needed to chill out on feeding the German war machine tungsten. 
Britain and the US couldn't straight up cut Franco's supplies, however, as that may have pushed Franco into Hitler's arms. So they also bought out as much of the rare metal as they could. Another way Franco backed Hitler was through replenishing German submarines. In essence, German submarines would swim up alongside German ships anchored in Spanish ports to receive fuel and other supplies, then skulk away. When the British caught wind of this in 1941, having captured German soldiers from U-434 after it refueled in the port of Vigo, they said it was in breach of Spanish neutrality. Franco slowed the operation down, though he didn't bring it to a full stop, allowing the Germans to resupply their submarines in emergency situations only. From 1940 to 1944, at least 23 cases of German subs resupplying in Spanish ports were documented. Among Franco's other under-the-table plays was letting Abwehr agents and Abwehr-backed Spanish saboteurs run amok in Gibraltar. The Abwehr was, of course, the Wehrmacht's intelligence service, and throughout the war, they trained and equipped Brit-hating Spaniards to mess with the British in Gibraltar, destroying British vessels such as the HMT Erin and the HMT Honju, and blowing up ammo dumps and other important things. Abwehr agents also stalked the coast with binoculars, spying on the Strait of Gibraltar and reporting on Allied shipping movements. The British counteracted the Abwehr agents with double agents of their own, and then confronted Franco, who raised his hands defensively and said, Not hablo inglés! But Franco's BS didn't end there. While the Spanish army didn't march against the Allies, Franco didn't necessarily stop his people doing it. If a Spaniard wanted to volunteer to fight alongside the Germans, they totally could, so long as they've only fought against the Soviets and never the Western Allies. Hitler gave this initiative the thumbs up in June 1941, and soon Division Azul, or the Blue Division, was formed, growing to a divisional strength of 18,000 men and including an Air Force squadron known as the Blue Squadron. The Blue Division trained with the Germans in Germany and fought along the Eastern Front, serving with distinction and suffering a casualty rate of 70 to 75 percent in the February 1943. Battle of Krasny Bor, near Leningrad. In late 1943, the Allies gave Franco yet another slap on the wrist, encouraging him to pull the surviving Spanish volunteers out of the Eastern Front. So Franco said he was sorry, that he'd really truly learned his lesson this time, and that he'd have them withdraw at once. But around 3,000 of the Blue Division's members refused to go home, instead joining Wehrmacht and Waffen SS units, throughout which they were known collectively as the Blue Legion. These were the most die-hard, anti-communist, pro-German Spaniards that Spain had to offer, and they met their bloody end with Germany. All in all, some 45,000 to 47,000 Spanish volunteered to fight on the Eastern Front, with some 4,500 to 5,000 perishing. As we said earlier though, not every Spaniard was pro-German. Some actually fought for the Allies, such as Republican veterans who ended up in French refugee camps after the Spanish Civil War. Some of these men signed up for the French Foreign Legion during World War II, while as many as 60,000 fought in the French Resistance, and thousands more, the Free French Forces. The Free French 9th Armoured Company, for example, included many Spaniards and fought in the liberation of Paris in August 1944. Some other Spanish Republicans ended up in the USSR after the Spanish Civil War and went on to serve in the Red Army. Perhaps they even fought against other Spaniards in Division Azul. There's so much more to Spain's story than that, however. So, what didn't we cover that you think we should have? Can you think of any specific stories pertaining to the Blue Division? What about the 9th Armoured Company, or any other Spanish unit that fought for the Allies in the war? Why do you think our buddy Franco pulled so many dodgies? Why do you think the Allies let him get away with so much for so long? Please feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below.